Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes and dudettes, cans and bottles, welcome to 641, The Daily, where we're learning to <clears throat> be a better gamer. In today's part three, we're hot off the heels of part two, ooh, where we saw this cool gas first reaper opening. Um, a lot of Terran players like doing it. It allows you to have the gas to get the reactor and tech lab up on your barracks. Um, if you see that the opponent can't hit you early, you can swift tech up to medivacs. Magnifique. You even have the added benefit of concealing whether you're going for factory tech or barracks tech. Because both of them work fine. What you do not have, though. What you do not know. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know what the end of the sentence was. I couldn't remember. Here's the thing. What does MMA do when he's up against a cheese? We saw a pretty understandable, a pretty reasonable, a pretty acceptable, and all things uh, relatable opening from MMA. Last game. MMA opened, saw MC expanding, and just did the appropriate response. But what happens when MMA starts to see that things are a little bit awry? Let's go ahead and begin noting differences as we go into this game. First, we're gonna speed things up, cause there's no reason to hang. He's getting out his Reaper, he's sending out the SCV. Will he find the Expo and can he get a GG? He sees there's no expansion, he's gonna scout the main sun. He sees the Chronode Stalker and the Chronode Mother Corp. There's a center command. Reaper scouts what he can. He's trying to see MC's plan evolve. Do, 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 do we? He's gonna hide as she be. He's getting up a bunker. Um, yeah, okay, so we see reactor coming up on the barracks. We're seeing the other barracks come up. We're gonna see dudes get thrown up into gas. But there's that weird moment in time. The moment happens so frequently to every single player where you start to go what's going on here so still want to know nothing about this build is different than the last game and then he sees it <gasps> there's absolutely no nexus oh my god Oh, my, uh, oh, oh. So he sees no nexus. So you know what? Maybe we shouldn't actually get really fast uh, factory. You know, let's just get a barracks. Why does that make sense? What's our convergence point? Three barracks with two tech, two tech, two tech labs, one reactor with Starport and Reactor and Engineering Bay. Hello, I'm Gosu at Terran. I'd like to order a pizza. Yeah, I'll do the special that gives me two pizzas. I learned a bill order today. I'm gonna get rewarded. You're, you're a hand. Hang up on that. Took a weird twist, but at least you know the convergence point. Three barracks, two with the tech lab, one with reactor. Reactor at Starport and Engineering Bay. Just call Dr. Convergence. I'm gonna give you a prescription to Grandmaster. <gasps> That'll make you feel good. Take it every single day. As much as you want! So yeah, we know that that's the convergence point, so suddenly we're getting a little suspicious. Let's go ahead and begin doing some of the pieces to what we want to eventually wind up with. We're not gonna throw down factory to throw down a bunch of uh, widow mines. We wanna try to avoid that if we can. It's a little distant from the convergence. And you know what MMA does? He scouts up and he sees that there's yet another no expo. What is going on? Uh, so MMA begins to just say, you know what, screw it. We're gonna, actually, we're gonna get rallied back into the main base. 
He's keeping his SCVs rallied back, and I think that this is an example of doing almost all the right things, but just not quite. Here's something that's great. MMA has seen nothing. He's already getting ready to build a bunker there. Why? Why would it be good to build the bunker there and abandon this expansion? Because my enemy, he is not expanded. So I'm just going to lift this and land this back here up in the main. Yeah, look, there's the bunker already going down to deal with blinkedness. And then he sees the oracle. Oracle. The oracle. And they still wondering what the hell's going on. I mean, he's getting the backup bunker. He's getting the engineering bay to be able to answer things. Ah, he's even rallying back into the main. He's sending an SCV and he sees no damn expansion. Ah! So this is where MMA begins to panique. Il a de paniquement. Le panique. And MMA nearly gets himself in a position to be able to stay alive. Nearly narrowly and ever so harrowingly. But stems rather late in this whole sh business. Let me actually come back to here. I actually don't think he did stem. Yeah, these guys have stem, these have stem. In uh, the words of the bald guy from the Matrix, there is no stem. Thorzane is tall. Just want to throw that out there. He's like 6'1. I'm taller than everyone. There is no defense. Il n'y a pas de defense. So, what went wrong? What went awry? What are the things that makes MMA cry? He very nearly established himself in this good defensive spot. It was very narrowly, very nearly not enough. And why, and why, and why? I think it comes back to a couple of these macro choices here. I think it's pretty, pretty simple and pretty lean. But if we look here, there's little moments where things aren't getting produced. I think versus all the possible all-ins, producing these units is far and away the most important. We have a tech lab not doing anything. Getting a little bit low on cash because we're trying to do too much. We're trying to get this engineering bay up. I mean, honestly, lifting, salvaging, and repositioning, it's going to be fine. So let me just select all the barracks. Reactor and basically being in full production mode. See this, see this barracks for so long, not doing anything? See how the money's low? Because we're getting an upgrade, because we're adding another bunker. Now we're getting another refinery. And oh! Little gap. Longer gap. Significant gap. Huge gap. Huge. Nothing's happening. Holy double shit. Oh my god, no production. Uh, there's a little bit, there's a little bit, and uh, this one's still idle, this top one's still idle. It's so idle I want to cry. Oh my god, it's more idle than a high school kid trying to be cool by not paying attention in class. Look at the idleness. It's such an idle environment, and I don't mean that. No. And that, that I think is about it. I would say that what's really amazing about this, oh, is the fact that I can still misclick after doing this for four years. Um, really cool to see the way that MMA uh, wiggles and adjusts himself to be able to hold off this attack, but in a way that's not going to violate his original plan. And I do think that, you know, we looked at the macro, there were slips because he's trying to do too much so he doesn't have the funds but also he's being distracted so he's not building out of it and that's just obviously going to be enough to result in the dead death dirtling the death deadening doomsday um, so 
Sorry I got distracted by being a little sleepy and a little burpy. The logic is still there from MMA's opening. We did see, again, how the macro, both because he didn't have money at certain points, and because he was just getting distracted at some points, how that wound up killing him because he just didn't have enough stuff. The biggest thing um, is that trying to do too many deviations and wiggle around too much is what wound up hurting MMA. He got the extra barracks because he knew that something was up. And then he saw the Oracle and was like, oh my god, go straight in for that uh, engineering bay to get it up and then we're going to get upgrades and we're going to do all that other stuff. The logic is there, but still that constant production is the most important tool to hold off. Um, screw it, I'm done. In today's daily, we got the chance to see two pretty by-the-book openings from MMA where then he then identified what his enemy was up to and made a nice little adjustment to be able to uh, close it out. And then in each of those long-term games, we followed them up by seeing an, a, a match where MC did a big cheese. And we saw that MMA beautifully stayed on the course to get to the that convergence point by um, not panicking, by not doing a different build order, by not trying to answer something in a different way but always in a way that contributed to that end goal. Really lovely to see that. Um, really, really lovely to see. Uh, and that's what let him win. Let's take some questions. Little Big Eleven says, Dear Day Nine, the strategy seems great when seeing no nexus at five minutes. It definitely means that he's cheesing. But how can this help a lower level player when no nexus at five minutes probably means that their macro just sucks? It just sucks. <laughs> great question. I hear this question happen in so many different forms. It's basically, if I'm scouting something and I see a timing that implies what he should be doing, how can I answer that if my opponent is just so bad that I can't even apply that read? The answer that we always come to that will come back in so many different ways is that true pros are answering not what they think their opponent is doing, but by identifying what he can't be doing. I see an expansion, which means he can't be in a big, long, macro-based play. He can't be doing that. If he is doing a big long macro based play what do i the terran player need i need an expansion i need upgrades i need a really good economy to fight him in that late period but if he can't be going for a long-term macro game then i don't need this early expansion and my or i don't need this uh, amazing economy i don't need a lot of early upgrades i don't need to set myself up for the long term that's the, the real significant thing. So if we step into that particular example, all right, I'm a low-level player. I scout no expo. What does this mean? Well, I'm going to be getting up more defense and more units early. And if it turns out his macro is just bad, no big deal. I'm still going to roll over him because I have more, um, more units. I didn't go for huge economy. I just went for a pretty big economy which is going to beat a guy who had bad macro as is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, the a, a sort of more explicit example is, what if I'm planning an attack that's supposed to strike at a key timing so that I can kill 10 SCVs guaranteed? And you say, well, what if my opponent isn't, isn't going for that timing or he'll have that defense? Then you fucking kill him! Uh, Motor Mac says, what is your favorite part about math? Here's what I love about math. 
is that we have a statement up at the top, some assumptions. And then we have a conclusion at the bottom. And I can make statements one at a time. And you can't disagree with the first one. So then I make a second one that you can't disagree with. And I make a third one that you can't disagree with. Because each one of these statements is precise and rigorous. And then I can get you to conclude the exact same thing that I concluded. Unambiguously. Um, I, this, this principle of argumentation in math you'll see me do, use in the daily all the time. Because one thing I hate, here's what I fucking hate so much. I, I either fucking hate it. I try not to like pack a lot of the F word next to itself in the daily. I'll drop one every now and again. But I fuck, 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 fucking hate when I'm watching two people on the internet or even two people in real life happens equally frequently in both in an argument about a topic and they're both trying to win they're trying to win it they're trying to be right they feel like they are on opposing sides and that it's not about the truth or uncovering that it's about who is the victor fuck that what a childish little stupid way to just oh, I'm insecure and I can't ever run the risk of a thought that popped into my head being inaccurate oh I better try to win I better try to so this is when we hear argumentation techniques pop up really frequently and people steal them a lot from conflict and fiction where um, you know uh, here's an example some person says dude I saw this three barracks play um, versus um, Protoss that worked really, really well. You do an early attack, and it's really good. And some guy's like, dude, that doesn't work when you get to higher leagues. I mean, sure, it might work in your low-level shit games, but once you get higher up, it won't work. Already you'll notice that there's no substance to that statement. It's just like, well, people have differences, so nope. right? There's no value in that. And then the other guy says, well, excuse me, it's not like you're on your way to Grandmaster either. I mean, how am I supposed to believe what you're saying? The other guy's like, excuse me, I've watched so much of this and that, and you're probably just, just because it won a couple of games doesn't mean this. And it's like, what the, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you, both of you are idiots, man. Like, here's a real statement where someone comes up and says, hey, I'm trying this new three barracks play. The other person says, well, I don't think that'll work at higher levels because I have seen pros have x amount of units by nine minutes and if your attack is striking at nine minutes he's going to have a photon overcharge two sentries and a generally a stalker or two so i i don't think that'll work and the other guy says well actually um with this build order i'm using i will arrive with 19 marines and three marauders if i do it right which can not only kill that set of units but also kill the nexus and now the other guy is going to go, well, huh, well, what about if he goes for lots of gateways instead of just one gateway? So you see they're, they're both digging together, and suddenly this one guy who said, no, that won't work, gets presented with a rigorous, precise statement that is inarguable. And now they're collaborators together. They're working together to uncover the truth. And they might conclude something like, oh, so if, if I can identify that my opponent is not is going for a robo and then no more extra gateways, I can actually go concussive shell and then a whole bunch of marines and then I can win with that. But if I see him building gateways, I gotta stay back and defend. Like, like oh, now we've done a thing. And it's not about, you know, well, X equals this and X equals that. You can do it with easy qualitative things, too. Like, let's say we're talking about should we be drilling in a national park for oil? And you can say, well, so tell me if you agree with this statement. Um, what helps the most number of people is inherently better than something that doesn't help. Uh or that helps fewer people in a larger way. We want to spread out the goodness. And the other person can say, okay, I'll buy that. Or he can say, well, I don't agree with that statement because of this. So you kind of have a clear thing like, well, first let's debate this statement. And then if I can get you to agree with this, 
then okay, maybe I can step down to this statement and we can work on that. People in arguments should be collaborators working together, not not petty little babies. Well, ugh, I can't wait to see you get on the ladder and lose with that. It's like, why can't you wait? For, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm just chatting about strategy and you're trying to be like, oh, what are we talking about strategy here? Time to be right. Time to time to rock some bitches. Like, what the fuck? Like, it, it actually, like, genuinely, every time I hop into comments sections, I'm just like, oh, everybody is insane. Everybody in the whole world is insane. It's so stupid. Do you know what's a really good recipe? Is this chicken ensalada I made where I threw in a lot of bell peppers and weirdly a lot of coriander made it taste great. Guy hears that and it's like, time to fucking be right. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's, it's a flavor. It's a sensation. It's neurons shooting electricity to my brain in a way that creates pleasure. There's no right or wrong. That's just what it is. You like that music? Pfft, that's so stupid. It's just vibrations in my ears that feel good. It's insane. It's just insane. Let me tell you right now. If you are trying to be right in almost any walk of life, you're being an idiot. You're being a huge idiot. You're making an ass out of yourself every time you try to do it. Every single time. <laughs> Just like... Alright, I'm ready for another question. Well, I think I'm right. Well, why don't you listen to the other person? And just listen. The Pretty Girl says, Day 9, what race has the best two base all in? Not Zerg. Not Z It's gotta not be Zerg. Okay, who... I think, I think... I mean, I'm, I'm thinking hard. I, I feel like it's got to be Protoss. It's got to be Protoss. Purely for the reason that um, Warp-In mechanic is so strong. I think that's it. Protoss has a lot of well-established two-base all-ins, but the number of all-ins has absolutely nothing to do with whether they're stronger or not. Um, that's what I think. Let's get some cats in here. Kitties! Kitties! Tomorrow we're going to take a look at some interesting mech play by a quiet Gosu known as HTO Mario. He's been extensively exploring mech, and it might not be the WCS BlizzCon Finals level of play. But you know what? There's some great-ass innovation happening from the more quieter, lesser-known Gosus among us. So we're going to take a look at that and see how the mech playing TVs he's been tearing up the Korean ladder. Neku, Neki! Show's done. Thank you all.